Uh, uh, let's focus on the labour market because that's the whole point. So let's assume that all three of you roughly think this is right, that we end up with a non-EEA arrangement, so um, not in the single market, not freedom of movement, therefore. What would be the impact on the labour market, Alan? What, what would be the impact in terms of um, wages, employment, um, and so on? Um, Oh, on average, it's very, very clear that if uh, you're essentially if you're wasting more money on the cost of doing trade, you do less trade, you have uh, less activity. There will be fewer jobs and or lower wages. Uh, there's just, just no doubt about that. If you lose five percent of GDP, you cannot maintain the same real wages. Um, within that, uh, there might be particular bits of the labour market that do uh, better. Uh, than they would otherwise have done. But on average, I think it would be very grim. Now, how that will be spread between unemployment and lower wages is more difficult to call. Britain does have a flexible labour market, and therefore you would expect that after an initial shock, we actually will get employment back to around unemployment down to the sort of levels we've got now, employment up to those sorts of levels that we've got now. So in fact, I think the outcome will be that just uh, real wages will be you know, three, four, five percent lower. Okay. Jonathan, um, I know, I'm sure this is a very sophisticated audience, but can you answer the same question? Might you just go through the lump of labor fallacy, <laughs> just in case there's anybody here who um, hasn't quite got that? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, so, so you have, for the labor market, immigration, of course, is much more important, is, is quite important. So you have to take into account the, the impact on both trade and immigration. I think Alan's right, the impact on trade over the medium to long term um, would be somewhat poorer. Um, because we have a flexible labor market, unemployment would not change very much over the medium to long term. It would be where it is now. Um, uh, uh, but the, the impact of changes to immigration policy, as I said, depends very much because we don't know what a post-leave immigration policy looks like. Um, one thing that I think would happen in the short run, actually, is, is that, of course, even absent policy change, migration might come down quite a lot um, in the short term. Uh, I would imagine that if we did vote to leave, since we would both have an e the immediate short-term economic shock, mm. um, and the position of European nationals here would immediately become considerably more insecure, that you might quite see quite significant reverse migration in the short term. Um, so that um, would actually mitigate the short-term impact on employment, although it might make the short-term impact on output even worse. Right. Um, um, but just on the lump of labour fallacy, fallacy in case perhaps everybody knows about this one. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are clearly people on, on the uh, Leave side who are saying, well, if we left, we could uh, not have so many uh, Europeans, especially Eastern Europeans, coming to work in low-skilled jobs. So there'd be more jobs and higher wages for, uh, for British people. And we know, based on a considerable amount of research, that the first is, is not true. Um, European, uh, uh, there is no association between European migration um, and uh, the employment probabilities of, of British people. That is to say, more migrants from the EU doesn't reduce the chance of a British person getting a job. That's not because they don't take jobs that British people might get. Of course they take jobs that British people might get, but they create jobs <coughs> at the same point. At the same time, either directly because they employ people or start businesses, but more importantly, indirectly because they add to the size of the economy, they have wages, they spend them, they add to demand. Um, and so we have quite a good deal of evidence that on average that balances out. For every job that an EU migrant takes, another one job, corresponding job is created somewhere else in the economy for a, a British person to take. Um, there is probably some impact on wages from immigration. It's relatively small, even for low paid workers, it's relatively small, the, the latest research shows. Um, but you might reasonably say that actually, uh, um, if we did very substantially reduce low skilled migration from the European Union, I think it is reasonable to say um, that some things, probably not the availability of jobs, but some things, wages and or working conditions might get somewhat better, not hugely, but somewhat better for some people at the lower end of the labor market. Uh, I, I'm sufficiently old that I remember in the 70s that people argued that women shouldn't join the workforce mm -hmm. because men would then be pushed out of jobs. So <laughs> lump of labor fallacy has a very long, uh, and even now people argue that older people should get out of the market to let younger people have jobs. But when you earn money, you spend it, and then it creates employment. But anyway, Jeffrey, what's your view on what it will do to the, to the labor market if we have? Um, you know, I mean, one of the problems with the British economy, of course, is low productivity. 
maybe uh, there would be greater investment in our industry. Maybe we would have uh, new machinery, new robotics, new, uh, well, better investment in industry and increased productivity of our workforce. That's one response. Then, of course, there are other responses. Um, if we go back a few years, we used to have things like the Seasonal Agricultural Workers Scheme, where workers were brought in temporarily to do a certain job, albeit for summer months, and then they would go away again. So this is different to migration. Uh, people come in, they do a job, and they go away again. So there are all sorts of ways in which one can respond to this. Uh, but if you've got a vibrant economy, and of course, uh, the fact is, because we've had a successful economy, we've been a big magnet to people coming to want to take up jobs. And so, absolutely. But there's a different question about migration, which I hope we will come on to.